Hi everyone. So before I talk about this phone OnePlus Note CE, I actually want to start this video with the conclusion of this video. So the question is why would you even purchase this phone? So the answer is simple. If you want a phone with performance, good software and an AMOLED screen with a very cheap price, I think it's a very good phone. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this is there are a lot of people who are not Samsung fan or uh, if I'm talking about just Samsung A52 in particular, it's not even available right now. It's a good alternative. The reason why I'm saying this because there are a lot of people like me who just prefer a better software experience with less privacy issue and more stock kind of experience. So I think this phone suits their needs really well because Motorola do not have any phone with AMOLED screen and a good looks and with Nokia you are not even getting a full HD screen right now. See, I would still recommend Samsung A52 over OnePlus Nord because it has a more stable software, much better cameras, OIS, IP rating, stereo speakers, and a much better ecosystem as well. Yes, Samsung is adding some bloatware in their A series via software update, but I think I will still choose Samsung over OnePlus because of the security of Knox. So now the conclusion is out of the way, let's talk about OnePlus Note. So there are some things that I like about this phone, but there are things that I really do not like about this phone. I'll start with the unboxing experience. So in the box you get the handset, of course, a case and a 30 watt wrap charger. I purchased the 6GB RAM and 128GB ROM model because that's the only version that actually made any sense to me. But OnePlus did not let me choose the color as the base variant only comes with the black color. I actually don't mind the color but the glossy finish is just fingerprint and scratch magnet. The back and the frame are both plastic. They do not feel as cheap as Samsung A52, the phone is quite slim and lightweight. I actually do not mind the feel of this phone and the case comes with the phone is also good, it's much better than the cheap TPU cases. On the front we have a punch hole on the left side, I am glad they went with the single camera this time, I really did not like the dual punch hole in the first node. The chin is a little bit thicker but overall look of the phone is really good. On the front they are using some dragon trail glass protection. I would say it's close to Gorilla Glass 3. There is a screen guard pre-applied but it's not as good so I would suggest going for a good one. It's usually hard to find a good screen protector which have in display fingerprint sensor. And about the fingerprint sensor, it's good. There is some delay as compared to their flagship but that's understandable. Face unlocking is kind of a similar story. It works but the animation makes it a little slow. A lot of people are upset because OnePlus removed their alert slider. I am not. I think a lot of people who are going to purchase this phone do not have a OnePlus phone right now because OnePlus used to make better phone than this always. So the people who are going to purchase this are going to purchase it because it's the cheapest OnePlus phone. But I think that's just me. One thing that I really like about this phone is the display. It's not the brightest panel but it is good. I did not find any green tint or black crush. Maybe because the brightness does not go very low but it is a good panel. It does support a 90Hz refresh rate, which is smooth. It's not perfect, but I'll talk about that later. Also, the display supports HDR, which is also supported in Netflix. There are very few phones in this price range that can actually play Netflix in HDR. So if you like to watch a lot of media on your phone, it's a good one. Ambient sensor, on the other hand, is not really good. I think this is a very basic feature, and I think every company should work on these basic features. But let's come back to media consumption just for a second. So media does not only depend upon a display, it also depends upon the audio or the speakers. And the speakers on this phone are shit. They are the worst speakers I've ever experienced in a long, long time. The speaker can go loud but distort like anything. Listen to this. It is not because it has one speaker. I mean, yeah, it is a bummer, but I've used phones with one speaker before. This is just, I guess bringing back the 3.5mm jack meant that you can only use that because the audio output from the audio jack is really good if you turn off that direct audio tuner from setting. Let's talk about performance now. So OnePlus phones are known or used to be known for their performance, which is kind of true here, but there are some hiccups. I mean, it is fast when it is fast. I should hire someone else to write my script. I think it has more to do with optimization than the performance itself because this phone is actually fast. And I'm not going to say that it's going to be fixed with a software update. I mean, it can be, but uh, I am going to talk about what it is right now. Before talking about software more, I want to talk about the gaming performance as well. So I did play Call of Duty for half an hour and the settings were very high. So the gaming performance was really good. I did not feel any sort of frame drop. So in that manner, I think it's a good phone. Yeah. 
I was playing Call of Duty while the phone was on charge and the maximum temperature of CPU I saw was 42 degree and the phone did not overheat so that's also a good point. Let's talk about Oxygen OS now. The phone out of the box was clean, only Netflix was there as a part of extra application and some OnePlus related apps like Community and Store which I uninstalled right away. So I did not sign into any OnePlus service or did not open any OnePlus application. I think the only terms I agreed when I was setting up the device at the first time. So I did saw some calls going to some OnePlus domains, maybe just for tracking, but it was there. And uh, for the ads, there were no ads in the phone. Uh, there was no bloatware other than Netflix. And the experience was really good. I just wish the haptic motor was good enough to enhance that experience. That was the first thing I turned off in the setting. The touch to vibration is really bad. Okay, I know you have been waiting for the camera review, but if camera is your priority, I would suggest do not go for this phone. OnePlus are not really known for their cameras. I mean, with even Hasselblad partnership, the cameras did not perform really well. With the Sony sensor as well, they did not pull anything off. In this phone, they do not have Sony sensor. But if you still want to know, here are some video examples. So this is the front camera footage from OnePlus Note C. I am outside so you can hear the noise as well. You can check the HDR as well, like how it's working out. It does not look great at all. Also, one another problem, because of this punch out, uh, it, it's cutting my face and my phone is on my arm length. So that's one problem. And it can go up to 1080p 60 frames per second, but I'm recording in 30 frames per second for the stabilization. This is from the rear camera. It's 4K 30 frames per second. So I'm walking right now so you can see the stabilization. And you can hear the ambient noise as well. Uh, the footage looks a little bit jittery. The HDR seems to be okay. There's a lot of sound out here so you can see the noise cancellation as well. And for the photos, it's okay at best. There is no OIS, the HDR is okay-ish, and in night mode, it's like really bad. The nightscape is not good at all. You can find this type of camera in very cheap phone. So for camera, just avoid this phone. This phone does have NFC if you are into NFC payments or data transfer. Call quality is also good. The phone does support carrier aggregation and the network speeds were really good. Wi-Fi reception and network reception are really good, so there are no complaints there. I know in Indian version we only have one 5G band and in Europe we have a lot. I usually do not talk about 5G because it's not important to me and I usually frequently change my phone but there are people who tend to keep their phone for a very long time. So I can just hope that that one band is good enough to bring 5G in India. So like I said in the beginning, if you find Pixel 4 a expensive and Samsung A52 is not available, if you like to play games and a bloat free experience, it's a really good phone with really bad speakers. And I can only hope the OnePlus merger with Oppo would only bring the stability in the software and the speed, but I don't want them to change their software. I will talk about my experience of the software and battery more in my full review. I know it's not the phone that anyone was hoping for, and I know you're comparing with the older Node, uh, but it's a cheaper version of that, and I think the price value of the base variants is really good, especially if you're using an Android phone as a secondary device, or if you want to give this phone to your parents. Do let me know what you think about this phone. If you like my content, please give it a thumbs up or just comment. Subscribe only if you want to watch my face again. My name is Rohit. I'll see you in the next one. Till then.